I'm Mazarin Banaji. Um, I'm uh, an experimental psychologist. Uh, I, I teach at Harvard University. So I would say that the single most important result from 30 years uh, or more of research on the topic of implicit uh, cognition has been the discovery that we can say how we feel about somebody, and it could be a very positive uh, uh, appraisal. But when we look at the results on our tests, on these tests of implicit cognition, we actually do not see uh, the same thing. So um, I'll just use myself as an example. I might say that to me, black and white people are, are equal in my heart. I love them both equally well. But when I take this test, the data show that my brain makes an association of good with white a whole lot more than it's able to make the association of good with black. This result is disconcerting to me. Um, it is disconcerting because I now can see a conflict between what I profess, what I say, what I genuinely truly believe at some conscious level, and what this test is revealing to me. That disparity, I think, is a very important moment for most individuals who lead an examined life, this is the moment of reckoning. This is the moment in which we ask ourselves, who am I really? Okay? Uh, in what ways does my mind contain information that I use in my daily life that I'm not even aware of? And that's really important. After discovering that these implicit biases lie in our mind, that we cannot associate elderly with good like we associate young with good, that we associate straight with good, not so much gay with good, that we associate white with good, not so much black or other, other groups with good, um, that we associate male with career much more than female with career. All of these results together showed us this disparity between what we say on the one hand and then on the other hand, the data that come out on these tests of implicit uh, cognition. So one of the questions that's very interesting is, can we change? Do we change? And we have a paper uh, that reports, I think, for the first time, that even these implicit attitudes, these things that seem to be stuck in our heads, the thing that I can't seem to change based on my will on a test, it just, you know, what pops out is what's there, not what I would like to portray. And so the question that was the interesting one is, can those sticky kinds of implicit attitudes, they seem to be just, just lodged there and unmovable, can they change? And the remarkable result is, yes, they can. Okay? So we have a paper in which we show that over a 10-year period, roughly from 2015 or so, from 2005 to 2016, that's roughly the time period during which these uh, measures were taken continuously all the time uh, across the country, millions of people. What we are seeing is that indeed there is a lowering of bias on some, on, in, in some domains. So sexuality is a very interesting measure. By sexuality I simply mean the association of good and bad with gay and straight people. As I mentioned, for many people, including for some gay people, the association of gay with bad is present in our minds. And yet, what we're seeing is that over this 10-year period, this anti-gay bias has been reducing. It has been heading towards neutrality, and not by a little, by quite a bit. 33% drop in anti-gay bias. That's astounding. Okay? We can spend a lot of time talking about why this might be happening, but that's, that's, those are the data. Um, extremely optimistic, I would say. Um, there is a shift also on race attitudes. We are becoming uh, more neutral on race, uh, and that drop uh, in that same time period is not quite like it is for sexuality, but it's still there, a drop of about 15 to 17 percent. Okay? But there are other attitudes on which there is no change, like our anti-elderly bias. It's still there over the 10-year period. It hasn't moved at all. It's still there, and even the elderly hold this bias. Okay? Um, so, so to me, these data are encouraging overall because they tell us that if you can see change for sexuality uh, a great deal, if you can see change for race a little bit, 
um, we can ask the question, why isn't it changing more? Uh, why isn't it changing for age? Why is it changing so little for race? And those are some of the exciting questions uh, that, that we will pursue for the next few decades, I hope.